this is definitely a section that it's easy to learn shallowly. So if you want to learn this like really shallowly, you can. And I mean, you'll just be able to copy the teacher's types of problems and move on from there. But then you're going to get to those problems that you have to apply the concepts, and you're going to end up pretty stuck. And so my point is this. Watch this video, but come with questions, and be willing to have ideas repeated back to you, even if, even if you think you're feeling great with them, because it's really good to lock it in. Exponential growth. As you know, exponential growth means things grow with some sort of doubling pattern or something like that. And I say doubling because that's easier to see than if I had a different pattern where I was multiplying instead um, from like 3 times 1.5 again and again and again. And I'll just read through this. Um, the general equation for exponential growth is y equals c times 1 plus r to the power of t where y represents the final amount. So down here, let's write down final amount. C represents the initial or starting amount. R represents the rate of change expressed as a decimal. I'm not going to bother that that has to be a decimal. And then T is time. With this labeled, other than the one, everything's been pretty much tagged. So let's see if we can make more sense of this formula in action. I'm going to do a quick little side. Consider a real world situation. I will choose bacteria. And I'll think of a table where I have x and y. And x is going to be basically my time. And y is going to be the total number of bacteria. Now you don't have to write this down. Just follow along. So then maybe I'm like, well, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. But at the very beginning, I have 100 bacteria. Now let's think about that. Well, that means that I'd have 100, which would be, you know, quite a few. Well, bacteria reproduce, you know, and that means that maybe between here and here I have a 20% growth. And if I have a 20% growth, that means I'm taking the initial amount of bacteria, and I'm going to be interested in seeing what 20% is. And I'm choosing a friendly number like 20% because I know that 10% is 10, so 20% must be 20. But it's not enough for me to just say 20 here. I would have to make this number 100 plus 20 or 120. So let's think about that. It's not like I just took 100 I also added on 20. Now I erased that adding on because this relationship is not addition. But isn't it true that I took that entire chunk of 100? And isn't it also true that I took 20% of 100? So I wasn't interested in 100% <clears throat> of 100? I was really interested in 120%. And I'm saying this repeatedly because it's not just the entire quantity of one of those 100s, but it's really 1 and 2 tenths. Type that into your calculator and confirm that you would get 120. Well, you would because you're distributing this to get the entire 100 as well as 2 tenths more of it. So you got 1.2 times more. I guess that can be repeated, right? If I had 120, and I wanted to know what would happen as I move from the first to the second stage, well, it's not like those original 120 are going to disappear, so I'll need to multiply it by 1. It's also going to keep on reproducing, so I'll do times 2 tenths. 
And when I type that in my calculator, I think I now get 144. Now, aren't I just going to keep on going with the same pattern? I think so, so that now I have 144 times 1 plus 0 0.2. Now I'm getting my um, calculator going for this. And I get 172 and 8 tenths. Now obviously, as you do real world problems, you might round differently. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1.2 again. And I'll use my original input to uh, keep this accurate, because I can. And I'm getting 207.36. But what makes these more challenging is I haven't really dealt with decimals before, so it makes the numbers a little bit more str strange to look at. Hey, aren't I taking my original value and then multiplying it by 1.2 to get something? And then multiplying that by 1.2 to get something? And then multiplying that by 1.2 to get something? And then multiplying that by 1.2 again and again and again? And aren't repeated multiplication problems the same as using an exponent? So that if I wanted to, I could take my initial value C and then multiply it by 1 because I'm taking the entire value of it times the percentage or the rate at which it grows to the power of the amount of time that I'm letting this occur over so that when my initial times 120% or whatever it ends up being multiple times ends up giving me that resulting value of my final amount. So I'm going through that lengthy explanation of a bacteria problem to help put more sense behind this. Because as we do these types of problems, it's very easy to just apply the formula and not really see where it comes from. And that might be a good thing to take a test but it's not going to be a good thing to learn this over time. So this is 9.6 growth and decay. We have this formula, and now let's see if we can apply it. In sports, in 1971, there were 294,105 females in high school sports. Since then, the number has increased an average of 8.5% per year. Now, just for starters, let's rewrite 8.5% just here to the side is equal to 0 0.085 as a decimal. I point that out because there's a lot of different ways you can think about this, but I didn't talk through it. I just showed those loops because I don't want to mess with you. But if I look at this, this is in the ones place, you know, because it's the ones place per percent is out of 100. Just make sure you realize that as a percent goes to a decimal, and you got to migrate that decimal point two spaces over. So if that's not clear to you why that is, then come talk to me. Okay, now we're told to write an equation to represent the number of females participating in high school sports since 1971. Well, the easy way to go about this is to just use that formula and never make any connections to things. So hopefully, as you're writing this formula, hopefully it has more meaning and you're not just being a robot about it. Okay, so here I have the original formula, y is c times 1 plus r to the power of t. Now i got to decide which each of these values are. So I'm going to bring my equal sign down. Do I know what C is? Well, it's the initial amount. Do we know how many we began with? Well, the initial value is 294,105. Now we move on to 1 plus R, 
which is a decimal, 0 0.085. So that that 8.5% growth is going to be multiplied by this number. But not just 8.5%, we also are going to be taking 100% of that number. So really we're taking 108.5% of that. Um, and I'm pointing that out. I could also write the number 100 as a percent and show that moving back to where it's just the same as 1.0. Jumping around a little bit, hopefully it's okay. Um, now they're saying since 1971, well, we're just going to use T here. But when we have to apply it, we can't forget that this was based on our starting year. This is our initial year. But as far as question A is concerned, we have already done everything they want us to do. According to the equation, how many females participated in high school sports in 2005? So now, I think it's fair enough that because this is right here, and really it's sort of one step, you can just plug it in, but I'd still like to see a little bit of work. So let's rewrite it anyway. 2, 9, 4, 1, 0, 5 times 1 plus 0 0.85 to the power of, well, you got to decide what this is. 1971 is 29 years from 2000. 2000 is 5 years from 2005. So I can put 29 and 5 together and we'll use the value 34. If you're not sure I did that, just get a calculator out and do 2005 minus 1971. Now that we do have all this, I'll type this into a calculator, 294.105, 1. But this, in my calculator, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to type 1.085 because I think I'd do that in fewer steps. And we get approximately 4,000,000. Seven hundred eleven thousand. Now I have four point four. Well, I'm not going to round down for this particular problem, and I'm not going to leave it as a decimal because we're dealing with people. So I'll write nine hundred. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said nine hundred females. Okay, now sanity check this. That is a huge number. It might make you think you did something wrong, but this is a big number. You're multiplying a number by itself 34 times. That's crazy huge. So this does not seem outrageous to me. Oh, you know what else you can do? You can also just take this chunk and multiply it by one point um, and see what happens there. So I'm going to go and delete back, but I'm going to take out the first number. And so when I multiply 1.085 to the power of 34, I'm going to write this in red. I got 16. So basically, that means you're going to be multiplying this earlier number by 16. So something that grows by 8% over 34 years is 16 times bigger. And here's why this stuff is so darn important. This is how money behaves. So that if you invest 1000 bucks today, imagine how much that could be worth if you just made 6% on it. But if you could avoid touching that $1,000 for 50 years, and as young as the people are taking these notes, that's a possibility. Computer use has risen 19% annually since 1980. If 18.9 million computers were in use in 1980, write an equation for the number of computers in use for T years after 1980. So, well, we got Y is... C times 1 plus R to the power of T. Well, that is the initial value, right? So my initial value is 18.9. And I have to keep in mind that that's in millions. 1 plus 0.19. Now, 19% growth is larger than in 0.085 growth. I just realized I made a mistake back here. If you caught that and got confused, I apologize. I typed all my stuff into the calculator correctly, though. So hopefully you were like, well, he did that that way there and not this way there. Um, sorry about that. Um, 1.19. So 19% is going to grow way qu quicker than 8.5%. Something to just be aware of. But we don't think of C as a variable in this problem. We're just starting it off as a starting value. We don't think of R as a variable in this problem, but we do think of T as a variable in this problem. 
So that makes it also something that's a little bit challenging and a bit of an adjustment to figure out. We don't know how long this is going to behave, so we'll end up using a variable for t. We want to be able to use it for one year, two years, a thousand years. So predict the number of computers in 2015. Now, here's how I like to think of these. Here's the year 2000, right? They're wanting us to stop in 2015. We began in 1980. That means that 80 is 20 years from 2000, and 2000 is 15 years from 2015, and when I slap those two together, I get 35 years. I do that all in my head as opposed to using a calculator. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 18.9, 1.19. I'm jumping a step there. And then my exponent is going to be 35. Now just to prove a point, I'm going to rewrite 18.9, but I want to multiply this number out separately. And I'm going to do that because I can see that my new value is 440. So when I took something for 35 years and let it grow repeatedly every year by 20%, I'm now going to be multiplying this number and making it 440 times larger. Now, I want you to keep something in mind. I still have an equal sign. That wouldn't be true. I technically need a approximate symbol. And the same deal down here. But when you multiply these two numbers, I don't want you to retype this. I want you to type in 18.9 times and then pull up that second key to recall your most recent answer. And the reason I say that is because if you round once and you use a rounded answer, you're going to be further from an accurate result. So I have an approximate symbol here because the math's not true, but in your calculator I want you to be smarter than that and I want you to use the answer so that when you write down the final answer of 8,329.241 that you haven't used this rounded answer. Now this was supposed to be in millions, wasn't it? So that, that means really this is in my millions place. So if I want to really get this correct, I'm going to write 8, 329, 241. Were you wondering why I went back so far for my decimals? Comma, 473, if you wanted to see what your calculator says. So that would be 1,000, million, billion, 8 billion computer users. That's pretty wild. So that many computers. And I guess if you think about all our smartphones, tablets, and things like that, it doesn't seem unreasonable to say approximately 8.3 billion computers. Okay, um, this will mark the end of the first of three videos. And uh, before we move on to the second one, uh, maybe give me a little rundown of how that felt. And if you have any questions, because that bacteria problem, we can go through that more gradually, one-on-one -on -one asking questions as we do.